Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the GRCV Hoops Podcast. My name is Gavin Campbell, and alongside me, as always, Ricardo Vargas. Happy to be here, as always. And introducing the newest member to the GRCV Hoops crew is Felix Mbanga. Felix, welcome to the show, my man. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to uh, everything that we're going to be talking about, and I'm looking forward to the next couple of debates that we're going to have today. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely happy to have you on here. Um, it's going to be nice to have another voice in the conversation here, you know, to try to get some more opinions flying. And uh, just jumping into the first topic of the day, uh, going back, because we were off a couple weeks uh, due to the Thanksgiving uh, break that uh, we had, you know, we are college students, you know, we need a break every once in a while. <laughs> so um, it's been it's been a couple weeks since we've been here. We hope you all had a, a good break, but uh, we're back on top of things here. Going all the way back to November 16th, Joel Embiid scored a career high against the Lakers in their win 115-109. Joel finished with 46 points and 11 rebounds. 46 points is his career high. Um, over these past two weeks, Joel is averaging 26 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists to go along with 2 blocks. And the Sixers are 5th in the Eastern Conference with a record of 11-8. and eight. I'm going to ask you fellas, how impressive have the Sixers been over this two-week stretch? The, yeah, the Sixers, I, I, I think that all of their pieces are finally starting to come together. You know, They still have some injuries, but... Mostly everybody's uh, healthy. You know, you got Ben Simmons running the point, um, small forward. And you got Joe Embiid, who's um, living up to his hype and playing the way that we um, he was expected to. But um, they've been playing really good, and I'm looking forward. I, I don't know if they're going to be, like, one of those top-tier teams yet, but they're definitely showing some promise. And I just want – I can't wait to see how the rest of the season – the rest of their season goes and see how um, everything plays out. I'm right there with you. Yeah, they are playing to their potential, especially, of course, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. I think once Markel Fultz comes back, this is going to be a totally different team, and I think they're going to be better, just like how we've said in previous weeks. And, you know, this career high for Joel Embiid, 46 points, that was just crazy. He just tore the Lakers apart. And I think the chemistry between Embiid and Simmons is just great, and hopefully when Fultz comes back, he, you know, he takes him to the next level. You know, East. <clears throat> excuse me. You say uh, you mentioned the the absence of Markel Fultz and players have had to step up, including uh, you know Timothy Lawawu Cabrero and you know uh, T.J. McConnell and guys like this. T.J. McConnell's been playing really well these he past has, couple weeks. Has. I think he's been a a huge part of the Sixers' success. But you know, if if we look past what Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are able to do in carrying this Sixers squad, what about players like Robert Covington? You know. Uh, Dario Saric, these guys, especially Dario Saric from last season, building on you know what he's been able to do. JJ Redick's been a big part of the success. Amir Johnson, great locker room guy. Um, he just, is. You know the Sixers are sitting in in the fifth seed right now. How far do you think that they could possibly go in the playoffs? Um, you know, I mean, I think it's a little too early to you know just um, even if to say anything about how far they'll go. You know. There's still a lot of other teams that have a lot to prove. Um, you know, there's still a lot of people injured. Um, but as far as Mar- Marco Fultz, um, I just don't know. Um, he still has a lot to prove also. I just don't know how much of a factor he is going to be once he comes in because he only played a couple games up at the beginning of the year. And, you know, it's just it's too early to say, um, you know, that he he will be an X factor if, if, he, if he comes back and um, – like I said before, I'm just I I, I just want to see how everything um, plays out the next couple of weeks, and hopefully, then um, you know, then it'll be a good uh, time to answer um, like as far as how far would they make it in the playoffs, and just um, I think we just um, should give them a little bit of time just to see how everything goes. Do you think that the Sixers are a playoff team though? Do you think that they are a top eight seed in the Eastern Conference? In the in the Eastern Conference, definitely. Um, the Eastern Conference isn't. Um, as tough as, I don't know, it's not as tough as the West is, but as far as making the playoffs, I think that will be something um, that they'll do. And um, as far as how far, um, I'm just not sure yet. I think they are a playoff team. And I'm this is a bold statement right now. Once Markel Fultz comes back, He's going to be in the rookie of the year running. Mark my words. Are you sure about that? I know I'm 100% positive, big oh, guy. Yeah. 100%. And Robert Covington, underrated guy. 
Love him too. He did just get paid. He did get his uh, uh, extension, forty something million dollars. And what makes you think Markel Fultz is gonna be the guy? Well, if you were watching him in college, Uh, you saw what he did. College? Yes, he is. College and NBA are two completely different. I mean, they are, but he he did he did produce at Washington, just not with the W's. We know that's what it's all about. But we saw we saw the skill set that he had. And if that can carry over even in the slightest bit into the National Basketball Association, you will survive. And he doesn't look like the type of guy who has to be like the main the main guy. He can mm-hmm. be the second or third option. He looks like he can he's okay with that and he can still produce at a high level. It's gonna be really crazy. Let me just say that I think you're taking it a step too far when you say rookie of the year because I think that oh, no, I no, think no. I think that, about the number one pick. Listen, Keep listen, listen, me. listen, oh. listen. Right, I, I think <laughs> I think why you're taking it too far is that if you didn't notice the other sixer in his teammate and Ben Simmons, I'm pretty sure it's already the bona fide mm-hmm. rookie of the year ben Simmons in, in what he's and what he's putting up right now. I mean, almost a double double. Uh, you could go with rebounds or assist. I mean, the guy is a LeBron esque player. He is. He is. But like, I just think Markel Fultz. Like, we got to give him a chance. He he was the number one pick. <laughs> so you think he'll outplay Ben Simmons? Okay, maybe not outplay Ben Simmons because Ben Simmons has proven himself. He's an absolute monster. Once in a, gener- in a generation talent, but I think Fultz has game. Honestly, I think that Ben Simmons could run point on it. And I think that if the Sixers do, like, if they trade away Marco Fultz for, for, like, a different player, I think they'll do just fine. I, and, you know, that might sound that might sound absurd, but I'm going to have to piggyback off of what Felix said because – if you play Ben Simmons and Marcus, you're looking at me like I'm crazy right now. <laughs> but look, if if you put Ben Simmons and Marco Foles on the floor together, these are two guys that yeah. are not known for being shooters. Okay, you already have Robert Covington on the floor. We know that he's an, he's a pretty solid three point shooter. Joel Embiid can step out and hit it when he needs to. Dario Saric is okay, but having three mediocre three point shooters and then two guys that can't shoot outside of eight feet, I mean, this is this poses a huge problem, especially when it comes to floor spacing. Like. This is this is the last thing I'll say about them. It's it's very similar, Kyrie, LeBron, of course, not with the shooting, not with the talent, but I think it's like a similar situation. I think Ben Simmons he can like fit in that LeBron role, and then Fultz as like a Kyrie for that team. Yeah, but I know they're you know they're different players, of course. I'm not I'm not trying to compare them, but you know I can see that. So does this mean further? I'm sorry to cut you off, but does, does this mean down the road that Markel Fultz is going to pull a fast one and go behind Simmons back and request a trade? To a to a, a conference rival? Hey, I don't know. I don't know. I you know. I don't know Ben as a teammate. I don't even know him personally. But I think they'll be just fine, and they won't trade Fultz away. He is a talent. And you know, both um, Markel Fultz and Ben Simmons, they're two really competitive guys. So I mean, to and you know what you said earlier about LeBron, um, as when he was playing with Kyrie, backing off. Um, LeBron, he 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 already proved himself. Um, you know, he, he already proved himself to be the guy. So he Thank was you. he was willing to <laughs> take that step backwards, you know, because, I mean, he was, he, what, he was already, he, he was came in the NBA 2005. So he's been in the NBA for a while, and he, he realized in order for the, for the team to do good that he's going to have to back off. But Ben Simmons and Mark Hill, they st- both of them still have a lot to prove. So I don't, I th- I don't think it's going to be as easy f- since they're the young guys. I don't think it's going to be as easy – um, for any of the, either of them to you know kind of back down and let the other one shine so that they can um, just try to try to play together. I don't think they have the experience. I mean, especially when it comes to young talent. Yeah, young talent. You, you're, you're out to prove yourself, your own worth, and I don't think that and as 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 much as Ben Simmons, you know, as as skilled as he is, and you know, he's been in the league for an entire year. He just hasn't played yet up until yeah. this season. He's he's been able to experience the NBA culture and take <laughs> all of that in, uh, but. Looking back in, in retrospect, it's like had had he played, where would the Sixers be at right now? Even with Joel Embiid going out, you know, I mean, how how far along would he be in his career now? Had he played, we don't know. But just the the fact that they are both very young, I just I, it's hard for me to see the comparison, which is not a bad comparison. I just think that I need a bigger sample size before that I could come to that conclusion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not right, you know, understandable. That's understandable. I just think with a good with. Good coaching. That big three in, in Philadelphia can be. And yeah. speaking of coaches, Brett Brown is a very underrated coach. He he's he's he been really in is. that Philadelphia system for the past four or five years now, and he's really been able to to hold it down in terms of you know going through the whole trusting the process phase yeah. and actually having talented players. I mean, if anything, like I've, I've said this so many times on the show, I feel 
great for Philadelphia fans yeah, and not having to watch. They waited, so long. <laughs> they waited for so long. And not having to watch crap. You yeah. know, every time you every time you show up to to the to the stadium. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if your team can't put together at least a thirty win season, I mean, why yeah. why, why even show watch? up? Exactly. You know. No, and it takes a lot for those fans to stay in the trenches <laughs> when it's so bru- it's so brutal. It, like I want, I like I want to go to the oh, game about uh, yeah. in Philadelphia. But I, I hate I hate to be blunt about it, but that's that's how it was. I mean, you can't tell me when Joel Embiid misses two years, and then you know you trade off. Um, you know, Drew Holiday, yeah. and then Michael Carter Williams after his rookie season. What happened to him? Oh, I don't understand. You know, That's crazy. Season. It just, I mean, just that he that franchise nuts. has been through so much. It, it's just been interesting over the past few years. You know, the, the whole waiting, and then it's like, okay, well, are we going to tank? Should we tank? Well, maybe we should try to, and then just trading players, and then they just the whole situation with Jaleel Okafor and Nerlens Noel, and then Embiid that coming true. back. That, that was Honestly, just really strange. I did not expect Ben Simmons to play uh, to be a player like he is now. No, um, you know he in college he 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 was a good player in college, but I just didn't I did not expect him to almost average a triple double um, no. in his first playing year. But um, but yeah, the the Philadelphia has been through a lot, and you know it's just um, you know it's great to uh, see them finally you know um, be cut, going. Towards becoming a top one of the top tier teams. No, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, we, let's let's hope that they have a you know successful rest of the <laughs> three fourths of the season. We've only, we've only got twenty games, not even twenty, nineteen games under their belt, and uh, mm-hmm. hopefully they can keep up the success. I said, I said at the beginning uh, when we started the show two and a half months ago, I said that Philly would be a top five seed in the Eastern Conference. I'm hoping that that holds true. I think it um, will. <laughs> Uh, moving moving on, this happened uh, November 22nd, uh, again, uh, about a week ago. Uh, the Celtics' 16-game winning streak came to an end to the Miami Heat. Uh, the Heat beat the Celtics 104-98. Despite a late comeback from Kyrie Irving, uh, he finished with 23 points. Jason Tatum, the rookie, finished with 18-7. and seven. Waiters and Drogic combined for 53 points in that game, and Miami ended up winning by six. Um, how much of this was on the Heat, and how much of this was on the Celtics for them to lose this game? You know, I expected the Celtics to eventually lose, and we're going to stay on the feet of the rest of the season. And I think, you know, Miami just played better that, that night, and I don't think they're a better team than the Celtics, of course, but they, you know, they played well. You know, uh, it, uh, Deion Waiters, he's he's had an all right season, nothing too crazy. He played well. But like I said, it was just they got lucky, I think. Not, not, I'm, not I'm not trying to be biased or anything, but they did get lucky. Yeah, I agree. Um, the They were bound to lose, but... I, I don't think in no way, shape, or form that Miami is a um, better team than the, than the Celtics. Um, as far as the playoffs go, um, uh, I think, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, it's kind of early, but as far as the play, I think um, they have, that they have the talent. It's just like um, whether they can play that way, play good, um, consistent on a day-to-day to, day to day basis. But um, yeah, I think they're they may make the playoffs, may not. But you know, it's um, we'll just wait to see how the rest of the season goes. So you think the Miami Heat being ten and ten right now, uh, having the eighth seed, you don't think that that they're guaranteed a playoff spot in this situation right now? No, I definitely no, I did. They're not guaranteed a playoff spot. Um, you know, there's still um a lot more basketball to be played, and being ten and ten, um, I don't. I, I just don't think being 500. I, I don't think that's gonna cut it. Um, they're not going anywhere. The, yeah, they're not even, going even with the return of Hassan Whiteside, you guys aren't giving Miami any credit at all to even get the eight seed in the East. You you know you can get the eight I, seed in the I East with, like, with who's, 38 who's, wins. Who's who's their leader? Yeah, tell me who's their leader now. Yeah, and Goran Dragic is having a great season right now. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't sleep on the Dragon. I mean, he looks great <laughs> right now. Like I'm not sleeping on him, but I don't think but, he can like carry that Miami Heat team. Yeah, like, like Whiteside, he's good. But I don't know. Sometimes he just uh. And Dion Waiters, he's a, he can be he can be a good player. It's just like I said before, he he's just not consistent enough for them. Exactly. Um, I, <laughs> he, it, it was just it's kind of mm-hmm. like placing your bet on like I don't know, I don't know. It's just it's not it's I'm not what? it's not a safe bet. I guess, I, I would say. I just think I just think for me, watching the Miami Heat the past three seasons mm-hmm. or not the three seasons, the first three weeks of the season. Excuse me. Not having Hassan Whiteside and still being able to hover around 500, I think Hassan Whiteside is a guy that can put you over 500. Just being the defensive machine that he is, uh, he is he's, a, he's a defensive anchor. He's the way that he's able to alter the shots of uh, the opposing players, 
and you know the way he's able to block shots and let's not sleep on Bam Adebayo out of Kentucky okay <laughs> oh, I mean I, shoot. I, I watched I watched him play against uh, LeBron and the Cavs last night and he looked he looked good despite you know them losing by double digits I mean he had himself wow. quality minutes in that game and even prior to that uh, I I believe Miami will be a playoff team even if it is that eight seed I just don't see you know maybe a team like I don't know maybe New York just because of how well Porzingis is playing. Uh, Cantor's picking his guy. Tim Hardaway Jr. is having an incredible season. Oh, so, thank goodness. Oh, my goodness. Especially after the first couple of weeks. I it was, yeah. I was wondering. Someone needed an APB for him because I couldn't I couldn't find him. Where was he at? Um, <laughs> but he ended up showing up. He's He's been playing really well the past month especially. He's crazy. And even though, even though New York is on the outside looking in right now, I think that they could grab that spot. But I, I wouldn't write off Miami right now. I wouldn't say that, you know, there's no way that they're not going to make the playoffs. I think that they still have a chance. If if the Knicks if if the eighth spot was between the, the Knicks and the Heat, I would pick the Knicks, cause I think they have a lot more firepower. They have a lot more consistent players. Um, if they do, uh, if they do, um, if they are in the battle for that eight seed, I think, you know, New, New York is gonna pull it out. I think that's fair. I think that's fair to say. But if yeah, it is. I tell you what, if you give me Dion Waiters, against the Golden State Warriors last year. I would I would go ahead and take Miami because if you, if you can give me Pose Dion, then I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bet against them. What if that was a seven game series? If between Miami and New York, they can give a run for the money, but like it dep- I think I think whoever has home court advantage in that situation wins it. Josh Richardson, he has to play good, so inconsistent. Justice Winslow has to step it up. I tell you yeah, what, and you know you speaking of Justice Winslow last night. I mean, just I didn't think the effort was there. I didn't see it from I, him. Honestly, when he when he first came in, I thought he's going to be a really good player. Same Absolutely, here, but, same um, here. But you know, he's been a disappointment. Just, yeah, he he has been. A Josh disappointment. Richardson, he was playing so good like the beginning he, of the last was, season. He was last year. But now I don't know where he went. And Dion Waiters inconsistent. Sometimes he has a really nice game, but then most of the nights it's just. I like his like he he likes to shoot and all that, but like I don't see it. And like Goran Dragic, he's always he's not he's not a. Healthy guy, you know, he right. gets injured. He's injury prone. Same with Hassan Whiteside. He's not. He's, he's no Carl Towns. I mean, to put it that I, way. I don't understand what you're saying, but I mean, just to just to reiterate, this is a team that has a fighting spirit. Okay, this is a team that that started off the season with 31 losses, and then they came into within a half a game of missing the playoff to the Bulls because the, the Bulls had the tiebreaker. I mean, they're they're very capable, and and now that they're you know sitting at 500, and they were without. Their star center, all star center, Hassan Whiteside. I mean, I just, I just don't don't write off Miami right now. Like this is the last thing I say about them. Their biggest fighter is Eric Spolstra. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. He's a great coach. He's he a great is coach. Underrated. And, and see that that should prove the point right there is you know you have the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat. If if the if the personnel is there and it's it's somewhat equal, you know, pretty similar in uh, in play styles even. If it comes down to coaching, who are you gonna take? I'm taking the Are you going to take Spoh. Jeff Hornacek? No, you're going to take Eric Spolstra. Spo, Spo. But no, like, I, I honestly think the Knicks are better. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Hardaway Jr. Yeah, I mean, Frank Nidikita. After, <laughs> after he gets some more experience, <laughs> okay. he will lock the dragon out. Porzingis, though, he's... he's I, 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 I didn't, when they first drafted Porzingis, I, I also didn't... I did not expect him... To be the everybody laughed. Was. Yeah, everybody. Everybody laughed at that pick except Phil Jackson. Yeah, everybody like, did. Geez. Yeah, Phil, Phil Jackson. Oh my god. Same Phil, with Phil, Nikita. Phil Jackson messed that franchise all. He messed it up. But like this is this is what I was talking to Rick about three weeks ago. It could have been maybe a month ago. I don't remember what episode we talked about it in. Phil Jackson was the cancer of the New York Knicks. He was. But before that happened, the greatest thing he ever did for that franchise was, draft was drafting Kristaps Porzingis. Christoph that like, and, no, be, and no matter how much you hate him, you have to give him credit for it. He was. Yeah. That might be his best move in, in his entire career. Oh, I don't know about uh, that. <laughs> I mean, he does have 11 <laughs> rings. Let's he not does. forget. But <laughs> come on now. Who did who? who, who? He, had, Michael, come on. he had some soldiers on that team to get those rings. He <laughs> wasn't, He didn't take the the uh, the Hawks to the finals. I mean, okay, the okay, the okay, okay, but let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yeah, let's Even be honest. Especially, especially with the Lakers, the feud between Kobe and Shaq, we, we knew about that. I'll, right? give, I'll give him some Okay, respect. being able to keep that under control and just have the wraps on that mm-hmm. and being able to win three in a row. I mean, yeah. A three-peat, no matter who you are, is not easy. With, with a young, against a young Spurs team. Exactly. But Greg come Popovich, on. Also one of the best You're talking about around. Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. What has Phil Jackson done without them or Michael Jordan? Uh, 
I'm pretty sure that he, 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 he took Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol and a bunch of scrubs and won two championships. Right. Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol. Come on. Po- they Kobe had Bryant. bodies on that team. Lamar Odom. Oh, my. Lamar Odom. Lamar Odom was okay. solid. Okay, you know what? I'll, get, I'll give you props. I'll give you props. Trevor Ariza? Come on. Look, Bella. Trevor Ariza was oh, an important not... piece, but he was, he was nowhere near. Even if you took Pau Gasol, Trevor Ariza, and uh, Lamar Odom, and all, t- all together, I would gladly trade those three those for Shaquille just, O'Neal. Those are just role players. Okay, listen. This All right, I respect him. One of the greatest coaches of all time, but he is a little overrated. That's all I'm no, saying. Look, I'm saying, look, I'll give you credit to when you say he's overrated in New York. Nobody liked him in New York. He was a jackass, okay? That's that's just what he was. But saying that you can't give him credit for what he's done, he's he has more rings. He has as many rings as 11. Bill Russell. 11. <laughs> That in is a new lot. Era. He's got more rings and he's got the, fingers, Rick. Not in the 1950s. <laughs> but like, com- compare him to a guy like Brad Stevens and what he's uh, been doing with the Celtics. Okay, so here's Brad, the thing. He's gonna be a good look, coach. look, we've we've talked about Brad Stevens before. I I personally think going forward, he is the best coach in the NBA. No disrespect to Greg Popovich. Oh uh, yeah. But I think that he Pop- is Pop- is Pop- is the real deal. Okay, that's why that's why he's everyone everyone on that team loves him. I think that's why they like playing in that system. I think that's another reason why Gordon Hayward wanted to go back. And right. play with Shoot. his with his former coach, but I, to to say that that let's let's back up back uh, let's back it up, Rick. To say that he's better than Phil Jackson, oh wait, is, no, is, that's a, that's no, no, a, he's, he's not. He's not. He's not. But I do like uh, Greg Popovich more than Phil Jackson. Yeah, well, he he's a better coach. Greg is he's a better coach. He, Popovich is 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 a is a very good coach, but he is he is. he is so unorthodox in the way that he. That's what I love about him. Exactly. No, and I I give I give credit to where credits due, but I mean I mean you can agree with me that the way that he runs that franchise, the way that he coaches yeah. his players is is just strange at times. Imagine if he had Kobe Bryant. I don't think that that would have worked out, to be honest. What? You know that know. he likes to regulate his players' minutes, and Kobe is not about being told what to do. Okay, okay. What about if he had LeBron James? That would be a dynasty. It would. Cause, cause you know, there is talk of LeBron going to San Antonio after this year. LeBron, he respects Pop, and I think if he, he, if he, if he was um, on the Spurs, that, that, that they would really... That I mean, Kawhi really Leonard, LeBron him. James. That, oh, man, that would be just That's sad. insane. I mean, could you think of a better... One two punch than that in the league. Yeah. I mean, maybe Anthony Davis and Demarcus Cousins, but that'd be insane. And like, look where the Spurs are right now without Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, they're still playing. They wouldn't be there without Greg Popovich. But I say they're they still would've... the third team in the in the West without that's their crazy. superstar. And the West is stacked right now. Could Phil Jackson do that? <laughs> I, uh, honestly, you know what? honestly, I don't know. Answer you know, that, that question. You pose a valid point, man. Yeah, I, I really don't. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but hey, you know, it's something to think about. You know, it is what it is. That, you know, that's what makes it fun, just these little theories. <laughs> but speaking of LeBron, speaking of LeBron, let's move on to the next topic here. November 28th, this was actually last night, getting back to that Cavs game that I was watching. I don't know if you guys caught it. It was a good one. Uh, Kevin Love went off in that game, by oh, the yeah. way. Um, fantastic. Uh, one of my favorite players, also. Uh, the Cavs continue to pick up the slack with the demolition of the Heat. I know the scoreboard doesn't show it, but they controlled this game from the start. Um they were at the King's Palace. They won 108-97. Uh, Kevin Love put up 38 points and 9 rebounds. Um, LeBron James, he went 21-12-6. and six. Nothing new. Great numbers from him. Um, but he got ejected after a non-call on a, on a lot of contact on a drive to the rim uh, that he says that he was taking contact all the way down the court for the entire duration of the play. Um, he got called for a technical foul and then was immediately ejected without receiving a second technical Felix, let me go ahead and ask you: Did Le- Did LeBron deserve to be ejected from that game? You know, honestly, as fans, um, you know, I was watching it. I was watching the game um, on TV, so I can't. I don't really know wh- what he said, but you know, it it all depends on um, what he said verbally, because you know, I don't think he was um, aggressive physically in any manner. You know, there are a lot of times um, players think they gotta get a bad call and. They've acted even worse, and nothing even ha- nothing happens to them. But I think if he did deserve to be ejected, it was all verbally. Um, he must have said something um, really, um, you know, really vulgar to the vulgar to the um, to the ref in order to get that ejection. Because he, 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 I don't think he was con- confrontational physically. At, at what I could tell, um, I don't think he physically he wasn't confrontational or aggressive in any manner. I don't think. Right, Rick, I'm going to ask you the same thing. I mean, we saw what happened. I mean, I've watched the play over and over again, and I'm sure you have as well. 
I mean, the way that it happened, you know, you could see the contact taking place. I mean, not on his on his arm. He wasn't hit or anything, but with the body. There was a lot of contact be- between him and Johnson. And the way that he reacted, you know, like any other player, you know, you know, flare your body and, you know, go up to the ref and express your uh, displeasure with the non-call. But do you think that he de- deserved to get ejected from this game? Like, I, just what Felix said, he must have said something pretty crazy to the ref for him to eject him. Like, I really, you know, I don't know what he said. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, it's the ref's choice, and I think if he felt the need to, you know, get that man out of there. I, like, I personally would be scared if LeBron's just coming at me. You know, like a Nick Young's coming at me. <laughs> Whatever, you know, just relax, you know. But LeBron James, a, 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 a mad LeBron James, that'd be a little bit scary. And he kind of threw like an air punch, I heard. So you know, I don't know. Yeah, that was in the in the in the referees uh, their their after game report uh, mm-hmm. the description of he said he he threw an air punch in his direction and approached him aggressively and then used vulgar language. Does this or does this not sound like what every player in the NBA does when when there's a hard called a hard foul that's not called or a, a ticky tack foul that's not called or that is called uh, in that matter? I just for me personally, I don't think that he should have been ejected based on what we know. Now, had we, uh, like you said, Felix, if we had heard what he said and he called the ref something, you know, along the lines of that we cannot repeat <laughs> on this show, um, then I think that he has every right to do that. But this leads me to Draymond Green. We know that he is one of the most outspoken players in the entire league. And if you want to talk about vulgarity, just mention his name. That's all you have to do. Um Usually what officials do, and from what I've seen, now correct me if I'm wrong, but when a player is going off, they usually give you the first technical to let you calm down. You know, they let you collect yourself and then move on with the game. Now, after they give you that time, if you're still on them after about a minute or so, they will give you that second technical and you're gone. They're not going to put up with it. But the fact that they're, they all, almost all officials are willing to give you a second chance, right? I don't think that this official gave LeBron that second chance. It seemed way too quick. That is true. Because LeBron... In the past, when he's gotten a technical, has been able to compose himself. He goes to the bench, he calms down, and then he usually keeps going. And as a matter of fact, he always keeps going because this was his first ejection of his 15-year career. Now, if he never gets ejected again, is this a stain on his resume? Um, as this being the only ejection of his, of his entire NBA career? You know, I don't think it'll be as a stain because I think in a couple months, everybody's going to forget about it. Um, unless... Like, you know, unless we figured out what he said, you know, to get that ejection and we f- find out that it's, it was, like, really vulgar, vulgar, I don't think, you know, it'll be, like, as a stain. I think everybody's going to forget about it with time. Yeah, I agree. Unless, like, LeBron, like, after the game went and confronted the referee or something, yeah. I don't think, you know, this will really matter too much. You know, he is the king. All yeah. he's done, you know, everybody gets ejected. Do you think Do you think this affects the officiating in the NBA? Because this is a guy that gave LeBron his first ejection. I mean, um, honestly, I think the I think either there was you know there was something wrong with that ref. Either he was um you know he maybe he felt like the need to like you know kind of um you know sh- display like you know I don't want to say power but you know. Um, his authority, you know, m- maybe to like, you know, LeBron is like known as the king, you know, right. the best player in, back- in, in basketball. So I don't think the ref, maybe the ref didn't want to like, you know, um, su- subjectify himself to LeBron and he felt like the need to, you know, show that he has authority. Um, maybe he just wanted the limelight for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, I definitely wouldn't have been doing that at the King's Palace. I mean, when you're when the LeBron plays at home, I definitely thought that at the very least give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, yeah. give him give him a second to calm down. We know that LeBron likes to be up front, you know. He does. And I think that that I, honestly I think this would go down as a mistake by the official based on what he said, what was said yeah. to him. But, you know, just just going back to other players that have done it, you know, I mean, especially when Ron Artest played. My goodness. Oh, man. Come on, man. We're Metal World yeah. Peace. And LeBron, <laughs> LeBron, he's just not that type of like. Um, no. Vulgar, vulgar he's a family player. man. Yeah, he's, he's a, a family. family. He's, he's a role model. He's the face of the league. So, you know. You know I don't believe yeah. that he said anything. No, you know, I. That was in, vulgar enough to get him an ejection. Right. It was I, just the heat of the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a bad look for the league, and that you know, it, it, something might might come out of this. Um, 
probably for the official that gave him the call. I can't think of a gentleman's name right now, but he's been in the league the for nine. But he's he's been in the league for nine years yeah. now. So, I mean, we'll have to see what happens. But let me ask you one more thing about the Cavs. They're on an eight-game winning streak right now. They're in third place in the Eastern Conference. They're one game behind Detroit, three games behind Boston. Could they still win the East? I think the East right now is up for grabs. You know, um, I think between the <laughs> Celtics. Um, you know, t- t- Toronto, you know, come pl- playoff time, you know, it's, it's crunch time for them. And they always m- manage to turn it up a year during playoffs. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, the Cavs, you know. I think because, you know, the Cavs, you know, LeBron James, he, he always turns it up during the playoffs time. So um, I think to say that they won't win the, win the East, you know, it's kind of, um, you know, it, I, th- I think that's kind of like a just a little bit out there. And to say the um, Boston will win it, you know, I think that's also far out there because you know they have a lot of young guys, not not that much playoff experience, um, uh, and the Raptors just I don't they've never even been to to the Eastern Conference Finals in a while. But say it's been three years. We're trying to get back. We're trying to get back. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. I, I, it's up for grabs or like between those three, those three teams and you know there's also like the Sixers if they continue to play well um, they'll be a threat you think also. the Sixers are capable of grabbing the one seed <laughs> not, not the, the, no. No. The, they can put up a fight though the, definitely in the playoffs they'll put up a fight you know if they play like the Cavs or, or the Raptors um, or, or Boston they'll, they'll put, put up a good fight do you think Detroit as long as everybody's healthy the, real quick Rick let me ask you this because 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 the Pistons are the second seed right now, and and Boston is the one seed. I know I know you're a Celtics fan, but Detroit just beat them. So if it came down to it, do you think that Detroit has any possibility of getting the one seed? I really don't think so. I'm going to be honest with you. I think the the Boston Celtics will keep that one seed, and then the Cavaliers will take that second seed. Especially Isaiah Thomas is right around the corner. They are going to go berserk. Do you, do you find it surprising whatsoever that the Pistons do have the second seed and we're already twenty games um, into the season? I mean, I didn't have them is, as a, I didn't have them as a playoff team. No, it is surprising. It is surprising. They kind of remind me of the Hawks um, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. That 50, I, I don't know how many games, but it was over, the sixty win yeah, Hawk team. They yeah, went, they went crazy. But you know, they played really well. They showed a lot of promise, but you know, come. When it really mattered in the playoffs, you know. They got destroyed by the Cavs, which is ultimately yeah. the fate of every other Eastern Conference team in yeah. the past four years, I, seven years. I, I don't know if that's going to happen to, like, the them this year, to the Pistons this year or, like, to the Boston this year as well, you know. Um, you know, <laughs> but both Boston and Detroit are playing really good right now, but, you know. Detroit isn't going anywhere. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, here, here's the thing is that, They've done it so far. You know, I think I think a, a huge two two major factors to this is, is not only Avery Bradley, but oh, Avery Bradley. Tobias Harris has stepped up his game. Yes, I, I don't even have a word for it. It's, it's tremendous the way that he's been able to step up this year from last year. Really and then Andre Drummond, Andre Drummond is making sixty two percent of a, his free throws. He's a oh, he, yeah, he improved his, his free throw shot from thirty nine percent from thirty nine percent to to sixty two. I don't know what's so hard about. Shooting free throws, what's, what's so like? Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Don't worry. I gotta, I gotta. Uh, you know, what? let's just jump on into it. Let's, let's talk about. Let's talk about free throws. Let's. What's so hard about shooting free throws? Let's, let's, free yeah. Throw. What is so hard about shooting free throws? Let's get into you it. How tell about, us. How about this? At the least, shoot like a. Oh listen, God. listen. How about this? How about this? Let's let's just jump into it. I know you're a Laker fan, so let's let's just get into <laughs> into your rookie. Okay, Lonzo Ball. Okay. Okay, Lonzo Ball's poor performance. So far this season, okay? Uh-huh. How concerned should your Los Angeles Lakers be with him playing 33 minutes a game, averaging 8.7 points, 7.1 assists, 7.3 rebounds? He's shooting 31% from the field as a whole, 36% from two, and 24.5% from three. 24.5% from three. And let, to, to, to hit on your free throws, the man is shooting 43% from the line. I mean, you know. This is inexcusable. Lonzo, I mean, he's a rookie, you know. It's just, you know, sometimes, you know, he has a weird shot form. And, you know, I know Magic Johnson commented about it. You know, he just wanted him to, um, Lonzo, you know, it's the NBA. It's different from college. You know, the defenders. The free throw line better. stays the same. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the the defenders are a lot better. Um, you know, there's a lot more pressure, people, guys in your face. 
So I just think he needs time to like realize, you know, oh maybe I need to switch up my shot for you know better percentage and, you know, I mean he's a rookie and there's still a lot lot more he has to learn, you know. Um, I mean as far as his free throw percentage, you know, I have no, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't have an excuse for that. Um, but you know he just needs to. What about his three point percentage? Three point percentage. I mean this is a guy that's shooting twenty four and a half percent from three in college. He shot. Over forty percent. Look at Jason Tatum. He's a rookie too, and look at his, you know, but his percentage. Let's say Jason Tatum is, is averaging he, almost eighty percent from the line. He's efficient. Yeah, he's an efficient guy. But best rookie there's, in this year's class. There's, there's still a lot that. Um, arguable, oh, arguable. No, I, I still, there, there's still a lot that Lonzo Ball needs to, needs to work on, you know, and I think right. he's gonna take it very, very seriously in the off season. I still, I still think that he takes the game seriously. I just. And, and there's nothing to knock him. I like the kid. Mm-hmm. He's very composed. You know, he kind of reminds me. He kind of has a Tim Duncan attitude. I mean, he really does. When, yeah. it, when it comes to the game. Technically speaking, he's only he's almost averaging a triple double. But you know, I mean, I can't I can't knock you for that. That's true. <laughs> but speaking, I would expect but, him to be a little more efficient. Yeah, he he just, he needs to be a lot more efficient. Um, you know, and I think uh, also it, it'll it'll help a lot. You know, if. Um, he had a other guy. I know he has like Jordan Clarkson. He's a good player. You know, he got How about Kyle him. Kuzma? Kyle, Kyle Kuzma has been playing out of his mind. He has. Argu- like arguably uh, the best rookie for the Lakers. I, I see this argument come so. up all the time. Me and, me and Rick have talked about it. He as, is. As he far is as better. stats go, he's the better player. But I know, think as far think, as production go. But he I is older. Know, he is older. Fair. He's like 20. I think Lonzo Ball, you know, he still has a lot more to work. He's He's 19. Still has a lot more to work on, um, and I he he's he definitely has a skill to be a good a good player, a good point guard in the NBA, and I just think he needs a little bit more time. You know, S- some people mature faster than others. Um, some people, you know, just like get that head start um, s- sooner than other other people do. Which is fair to say. I mean, I'm not gonna judge him too harshly, like and call him a bust right now. I mean, Rick. I, like you you like wouldn't Rick. you wouldn't call him that right now, would you? <laughs> How many times have you called Lonzo Ball a bust? <laughs> I'm not even trying because yeah, I've never said that. <laughs> oh my goodness! Because I respect the young guy, you know. Oh, but I'm just saying Jason Tatum is better. Uh, yeah, see, I mean, so, so see, this see season, listen here, listen here though. That's I I understand why you would say that he's better. I mean, just because Lonzo doesn't put up double digits in any stat category, and Jason Tatum is averaging double digit in points. Okay, I think what is the average right now? Six I rebounds, mean, something, like, something that, like yeah. that. And you also have to consider that the you know Jason Tatum has good coaches. You know he he has a good staff, and you know the Lakers they're not only rebe- rebuilding their team. You know they're also re- rebuilding. They need the right coaches. Um, you know, I, you know, real quick, I think I think you make a solid point, and Rick is giving me this look like. You're crazy, you know, like, but the, didn't we? Did we or did we not just, not just say that Brad Stevens is probably the best coach in the NBA? You're, right you're, no, you're right. So you're right. He knows how to, uh, you know, treat players, treat the young guys. So, know. what do you think, uh, Lonzo? Where would Lonzo Ball be at if he were in the Celtics, not the Lakers? I mean, I think he d- definitely would be. He'd be backing up Kyrie Irving, is what he would exactly. be doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so sometimes when you have, when you know you have a good coach, you know, um, you know, uh, I just. Think that J- Jason Tatum he got put in a better p- position than Lonzo Ball did. Jason Tatum is crazy. He's a key player on a playoff on, on the best team in the in yeah. The- but he he also didn't isn't pressured like to be the guy. He was he was he's not pre- being pressured to be the guy. That's very true. I mean, all that pressure face. is resting on yeah. Kyrie's shoulders right now. And be the face of the franchise. Going, uh, you know, there's some pressure on Brandon Ingram. But Brandon, Ingram, Brandon, Brandon. Brandon is coming into his own. Yeah, yeah. He is. He I mean, is. He still needs to put on more weight. I still can't yeah. believe how skinny I, that kid I, is. I'm, if he puts on more weight, I, I think he'll be a much better player. But it's not like Lonzo Ball has all the all the weight on the world on his shoulders. No, <laughs> that does. That I mean, he, especially with all the crap that his dog, do- uh, his his, uh, yeah. his dad has been, uh, you know, talking him up to be, and uh, exactly. just and all the all the stuff with his with his uh, brother going on in China, that crazy situation. And I mean, he's only nineteen. That <laughs> he's. People want him to be the face of the franchise. I think people called him the next Magic Johnson. Okay, this kid is closer to Rajon Rondo at this point <laughs> than Magic. At most, he'll be a Rajon Rondo. Oh, at man, most, you don't think that he could he could be better than that? No, I'm sorry. Next question. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Rondo, Rondo's a 
Oh, man. Uh, I mean, Rondo in, on, on those championship teams, he was a great player. Even yeah. shortly after that, he was a great player. But I still think that Lon- you can never, like, cap – a rookie's potential off, especially yeah. when you said, like you, like you said, he's he's like, only nineteen um, years old. Uh, who, who was it? Uh, was it? Yeah, Joel Embiid. I mean, did you expect him? Nobody to be, thought that he was going to be this like, good. It, he's been injured for like what two years? Two years. The and reincarnation then, of Akeem Olajuwon. Right. We did not think he was going to be this he good. He dropped for what forty six the other night. Forty six and and what was it? Forty six and fifteen. Yeah. An eleven. Forty six and eleven. Man, you I know, just I, I can't tell you how many people wrote off Joel and B. I'll just say this. The Lakers just gotta worry about just making the playoffs. But let's let's be yeah. honest though, when it comes to Joel and B, the Sixers lucked out. Yeah, they, they did, did they didn't even they know did. that they were getting this exactly. talent. They didn't, no. Because he, he he had only been playing basketball for so long, he's not like he's been playing this his whole life. No, he he played he started, it, he, started, he, started, he picked up a basketball in his mid teens. That's insane. Like, he used to be a soccer yeah. guy. He's a truly gifted mm-hmm. a truly gifted player. But I mean you know what? I, I just don't think. To me, I feel like Lonzo right now is holding the Lakers back of making the playoffs. He, he has been yeah. in the game for them two or three times this season, I think, where he's been on the losing end of the situation when they could have pulled out and won the game. I think I think everything's up to him, and I think they put people are putting a, a lot of pressure on him. I wouldn't say way too much because I'm not gonna. I don't know how much he can ha- Lonzo Ball can handle. Um, maybe he thinks that he can handle everything, um, but. I just think there's there's a lot of all, all I know is there's a lot of pressure on him um, to be the guy. If I were Lonzo, the the thing I would do is just like talk with my my dad, uh, Lavar, and just tell him to calm down. Just, you know, just a little he, bit, just, just a, a little, little bit. bit. You know, and because I mean, he could stop him. You know, from doing all that stuff. You know, Lonzo he he he's, he talked about his dad, and he just said um, he's his own guy, and. He lo- loves his dad for who he is, so I don't think that he's gonna go out and tell him. And I don't, I don't think so dad. either. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so either. But I think the best thing for him were, if he were to do it, would to be that just be like, hey, dad, just back off just a little bit, you know, with some respect. You know, he's yeah, not gonna right. go like there's, scream. There's nothing at him. wrong with a civil yeah. conversation with your parents. There's yeah, nothing, you nothing know, wrong. you can. I just, I don't, I don't see why that would be that big of a deal, mm-hmm. other than him being afraid of his dad. But I mean, like, I'm sure there's a handful of people that would be afraid yeah. of Levar because the guy is crazy. He I mean, is. let's be honest. Like, I, I don't know he's what he'll do. <laughs> <laughs> he's Some of the things guy. that have come out of his mouth, I just, I can't, I can't fathom <laughs> saying that on live television. Uh, it's insane. Uh, um, I remember he, he had this one interview with this, uh, with this, with this chick, and then. I don't know what she she she, she said to him, but um, oh, he was like he's like I'm I'm scared of you. I don't want to. T- I'm, <laughs> I'm scared of you. Stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah, that was the funniest thing. That ever. was that was uh, that was the herd. That was a Colin yeah, Coward. Oh, yeah, the, the, herd. Herd, the herd. I can't I can't think of her name, but that yeah, was I, funny. I know exactly what that you're talking about. <laughs> that interview was absolutely hilarious. And there's a reason that he hasn't been invited back is because you know yeah. uh, he puts people in their place. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. but getting getting on to uh, another rookie. How about uh, De'Aaron Fox and the Sacramento Kings? Um, a, a little over the week ago, they beat the Golden State Warriors 110-106 without Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Now, despite them being out, the Kings still beat Golden State at home. So was this still an impressive win for the young Kings, or was this supposed to happen? You know, um, De'Aaron Fox, he's, he started off with a lot of promise, but he's kind of cooling off now. He's, yeah. Um, but he's, he, he started off really good, but I think – you know, there's still a, there's still a lot more he has to learn. See, I think um, if they if they upped his minutes, yeah. I feel like that he could he they could put to. up better numbers. But only playing 20 minutes yeah, a game, exactly. I think is especially when you have George Hill on your team. Okay, not to knock George Hill, he's an okay player. He's an aging point guard. He's a good veteran, good locker room guy. I like George Hill, he, but yeah, he's on the decline. He needs to take a step back, and the Kings need to let De'Aaron step in, let Me Buddy too. Heald step in. When Harry Giles comes back. They need to let him play. Willie Cauley Stein is coming into his own, and this guy, this guy Bogdan Bogdanovich. Oh okay. yeah, he's his game winner there. He oh my god, that, that, that game winner! I mean, Over Draymond, one of the best defenders. That team. guy, <laughs> that he showed some serious swag oh, in that man. game, shooting it over Draymond Green, d- reigning was, defensive player of the year, and he was like draped all over him. And this is yeah, this I'm is as, as far as as far as I know, this is the cousin. Of Bohan Bodanovich from the Pacers. <laughs> I mean, oh. Bohan. And uh, I, you remember him playing for the Nets, though. I mean, he has some good I years remember. playing for the, for yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. He has a shot. Uh, especially uh, back in, like, 2012, 2013, when they had Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, and they were actually still making the playoffs and were somewhat relevant. Oh, oh, Pierce and I thought they were going to be the Do you, you remember that trade? Do you remember that I trade? Like, I didn't know what was. That was 
I thought I thought that was one of the. It was I, like I, it was I still like, think is is that was one of the worst. Um, that's got to be. But th- you know they are they are still rebuilding. You know. Oh but yes, they I are. think everybody from that trade is gone now. Um, J- J- Gerald Wallace is gone. Gerald Wallace, um, but goodness. they're better. They they're better. Well, they're a lot better now because I, they've they fixed it. They've brought in some yeah, role they, players. They, they Alan Crabb yeah, um, and uh, Damari Carroll. You know, and then of course D'Angelo Russell when he comes back. Russell, Spencer, Spencer Dinwiddie. Can I just say Spencer Dinwiddie has been stepping it up. He like, has. He's been playing a Colorado product. I, I, I can't. I can't lie. He has been. Dinwiddie. He has filled name. in that, that starting point guard role <laughs> amazingly. Yeah. You know, and just who, who knew. <laughs> I didn't no, even know he sure. had that in him. I thought he was a scrub. Yeah, I, I he, thought he was. But by his name, I could tell. I could tell <laughs> a bona fide scrub. I thought that's what he was. But he he proved me wrong. I got I got no no uh, like no harm in me saying like I'm wrong. Like I have no regret saying that I was wrong about him because he he is a quality player. Yeah. I don't care that it's only been like a ten game sample he's, size. He's a good player. They, he's he's solid. put up numbers on good teams. Mm-hmm. But Brooklyn is what Brooklyn is, and. I don't think that they'll do anything until Russell comes back, but they're holding their own. Um, and another player, really, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. I, I really find him interesting. I feel like he's an all-around guy, but he he, need, he needs to step it up just a little bit to get to that next level. Yeah. Um, I've, I've only seen, believe it, I've only seen like one Brooklyn Nets game this season, but no one's watching the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> um, but getting back, they're getting not. back to Sacramento. I mean, the whole the whole reason I want to talk about this is because I think when you're a young player in the NBA especially being one of the youngest teams in the NBA in Sacramento, getting a quality win like that against the Golden State Warriors, even without their two best players. Uh, they're still, they still have Draymond Green. They still have Klay Thompson, you know. And these are all-stars, okay. One of them defensive player of the year. One of them the best shooters the league has ever seen. Mm-hmm. When you're a young player like that, when you're a Cully Stein, when you're a Buddy Heal, De'Aaron Fox, Bogdanovich, you can take that and use it as motivation to be like, okay, yeah, we can mm-hmm. compete. You know, even though you're not going to make the playoffs, maybe that puts you – you know, your team was going to get about 24 wins. Maybe you get 30. Maybe you get 31. And, you know? and, and they're still a young team, so um, I think they're, they have a lot more to prove. And, uh, you know, there's, and there is still a lot more time for them to mature through the season and just figure out everything as far as, like, you know, like we were saying, De'Aaron Fox, um, he, he needs to be playing more um, for the – not just for his sake, but for the sake of the franchise in the future. Right. Um but yeah, I think I think they'll be. Um, they still have a lot more basketball, and uh, who who knows? I, I I just who who knows how everything will turn out. But they're a young team. I think the Aaron Fox, just how you said, he does deserve more minutes. And with more minutes, he can produce more. I think he has a lot of talent. I think he's like I, I like him more than uh, Dennis Smith Jr. To be honest. Ooh, oh, yeah. Dennis Smith, he's he is really good too. He's really good. He's I, he's balling out in, in uh, Dallas. I think the Kings have a bright future, especially with a uh, Fox and Heald, and hopefully, you never know. Harry Giles, he could prove to be something because coming out of high school, he was ranked pretty high, but then you know, college happened, all that. I I, I think that that Harry Giles, pre injury, was a top five pick. Oh I mean, yeah, you, easy, you could argue easy. he was he was easily a top five yeah. pick, and I think that the Kings, especially uh, going after. Um, who did they draft? Number five, Darren Fox, and then yeah, who? Fox, oh no, they trade. I'm sorry, they traded. Uh, they drafted Zach Collins. They traded him to uh, Portland. Um, mm-hmm. But if they if they get Giles back, I mean, I think that all that the teams, been a steal. all the teams that passed on him, you know, it's just, it's just like a Ben Simmons situation. It's like he's not playing right now; he's recovering. But mm-hmm. you still get the NBA experience, yeah, exactly. and you, you get to take That's all that in. That's worth a lot. So you know, you get to be around the coaches, you get to be around the trainers, your your uh, teammates, all that stuff. If, if he can be that guy, that top five pick type of guy, especially Scott Lewis here as well. If, That's if, another guy I didn't mention. He's playing really well. And yeah, and he he was a like he was out of high school, pretty ranked high. If they can produce, man, that's a scary team in a f- three five years. I was about to say the next three years they they could compete. I mean, really, that's that's not a that's not far fetched whatsoever. But no, it's not. I mean, it's not. It's not. Especially with Fox, I really like Fox. His game, his attitude. I mean, let's not forget that De'Aaron Fox, when the Kings and Lakers played, he didn't win that battle with, with Lonzo Ball. I mean, the Kings won by double digits. So that's what matters, exactly. Um, yeah. he's, he's a scary athlete. Um, I can he really, and he's him. he's such a he's just such a laid back guy. I mean, if you ever seen interviews, he really with him, I mean, is. He just he really just takes it all in. You know, and, he loves video games, uh, uh, Dragon Ball he's, Z. He's, he's, he's just he's just like you and me. You know, yeah, just like us here. And uh, okay. he really makes you. He's he's a relatable player, which he I really think is, is nice for mm-hmm. fans. You know, he's an easy guy to cheer for. That's worth a lot. Yeah. Um. 
But real quick, I need to get back to Lonzo Ball because I wrote this down especially for you, Felix. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, getting back to his free throw percentage, this is a list of all the players in the league right now with an exception of one that shoot better percentage that are not shooters mm-hmm. in the NBA. And starting with Shaquille O'Neal. Lonzo Ball shoots worse than Shaquille O'Neal, Clint Capella, Rajon Rondo, DeAndre Jordan, Andre Drummond, Tony Allen, Dwight Howard, Ben Simmons, Hassan Whiteside. The list goes on. Mm-hmm. This is a guy that shot over 40% from the three-point line in college. I don't care what his shot form was. The point is the ball went through the net. That's the name of the game. <laughs> what happened? Honestly, I, I, I hate to stick on, on this on. subject, but it really does blow my mind because I want him to be good. I, honestly, I don't know what's going on. You know, it's a free throw. You know, it's, 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 it's in the it's, name. It's, it's a free yeah, throw. It's, it's same, uncontested. It's the same bag, <laughs> same ball. Free. I, I it's free. It's the same ball. I don't know. You know, honestly, I don't know. I don't know why in the world. Maybe this is because you know he's playing a lot more minutes. Maybe he's getting tired. You know, his arms aren't. You know, <laughs> just trying to find something, right? I, I, I Come on, champ. <laughs> Come on, champ. <laughs> dot dot dot. I honestly don't know what's going on with this free throw. You know, oh, we know you don't. I tell you what. Honestly, no excuse. I tell you what. I'll leave Lonzo alone. I really do wish yeah. the best for him, man. I, I hope the Lakers can can figure it out this year and come back and make the playoffs. Honestly, because I think I think he's gonna change up his shot. You know, I think he's gonna have to. At yeah. the end of the day, that's what it's gonna come down to. I mean, we, we, there's know. nothing new. We've seen players do it before. No. You know. Yeah. LeBron James changed his changed his shot. God, I mean, probably 16 times in one season before. I mean, it's exactly. it's nothing new. Yeah. But uh, let let me get on to the last topic before we get into the fun stuff. Uh, before we wrap up the show. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies fired head coach David Fisdale after a 7-12 start for the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Mike Conley's been hurt. Um, that's not the coach's fault, but uh, why did they fire him? I mean, he doesn't have a star point guard. They traded Zach Randolph. They traded Vince Carter. These were his grinding yeah, guys, exactly. right? Yeah. So this really is a bunch of new faces. I mean, especially and even Chandler Parson coming back is a shadow of his former self, averaging nine points a game. Mm. I mean, that is... Honestly, I think that was... Uh, really a wrong move um, on the, the Grizzlies part because you know like you said Michael Conley is injured um, you know, on, the only threat out there right now is Mark Gasol and you know there are a couple other guys but um, I think that was a wrong move this even puts him in a worse, worse situation than they were before with the, before they were dealing with injuries and you know um, you know I think you can credit that 7-12 and 12 start to like you know the guys that wanted to trade Zebo and um, Vince Carter and, and all those guys. So I mean, ultimately, I think, ultimately, this is a front office decision. Yeah. So you would have to think that you know they were looking for some kind of scapegoat yeah. or something. Yeah. I, don't, you know. I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I honestly don't know why they. This even puts them in a worse situation because now they have to find a good coach. Um, wait for the other guys to come back, and you know, um, they, they honestly just have to get. The better guys, they they can't just like they got to rebuild. They can't like, live on Mike Conley and Marcus so. I was about to say, Rick, do you think that you know the Grizzlies' reign of always being in the playoffs, being a, a quote unquote contender every year? Do you think those days are over now? Like I think those days are over, but at the same time, I think it's a good thing. I think they should like just like I said, they should just rebuild because okay, they're always in the playoffs, but they never like go anywhere, you know. Yeah. You know, they haven't won a ring. So they're usually a, a second-round exit. Every exactly, and it's, pre- it's pretty sad to see. So I think they should just trade their guys away, give them another chance to go to a team that they could win a ring, and then just, just start from scratch. And I think, you know, Memphis is a, it's a nice destination for, a, for an NBA guy, you know. And I think, that, like you were saying, they also need that, like, X factor. Um, Mike Conley is good, but, you know, and Marcus – I think Marcus Sol, you can't use him as an X factor, but – you also need that, like, guard. Um, you know, you also need that really good guard, like, you know, uh, DeMar DeRozan or, um, you know, Kyrie, even Kyrie, even someone that Maybe can, even a Brad Beal. Yeah. Something, something like that. Like yeah. Beal, yeah. C- close out a solid game. player. Yes. Yeah, s- s- solid guard. Solid but forward. it is what it is, you know? Like, that. that's what I would do. I just think it was really disappointing to see them fire him this early in the season. So early. You know, yeah, I mean. Yeah, they've, I mean, it's only, like, what, 19, 19 games, 19 <laughs> games, and they let their head coach go. And it's, especially, he's been so good. That he's been like you know, good it's, especially working with what he had last year, mm-hmm. you know, and having all those injuries and putting together what it was and actually, uh, you know, competing with, exactly. with in, the, in the first round of the playoffs with, with what he was able to use. Um, and this is a guy that was on Eric Spolster's coaching staff in Miami with all those championship teams with Wade, oh, yeah. Bosch, and LeBron. 
and I just feel like whoever whoever gets Fisdale as a coach, even if it's just as an assistant, whoever gets them on their staff, that makes them better. I don't think this is a guy that goes anywhere and it makes your team worse. Oh no, definitely not. Definitely not. I know that I know that I've I've done I've read articles and I've heard uh, from people in articles that you know he's not a a lenient guy. Like he yeah. will, it's, he's a he's a you know nose to the to the grind and you do what, what you need guy. to do. Uh, and I know that Mark Gasol had a problem with that and they butted heads a few times, but you have to think how much did Mark Gasol have to do with this and him being the quote unquote star on that team and yeah. saying like and clashing with the head coach. Yeah. You know, just something to think about. That really but is. That, that might have been the issue too and like why did they decide to to let him go too. Yeah, just a, a really a really good coach. Um and like I said, whoever gets him is uh is definitely it's gonna help their team. I don't. I don't see how it uh, doesn't help them at Might all. Might as well I mean, go to he's Boston. A, he's really. <laughs> he's, a, he's a really. He's a really. He's a. He's a player's coach though. Even even though he's straightforward, he's a player's coach. You know, you yeah. see him in interviews, especially that uh, that famous take that for data. I mean, you could tell that he loved his players. He loved those guys. But uh, that's gonna wrap up the segment section of the show. Um, now we're gonna get into. Uh, before we get to the predictions, we want to get into. Uh, we thought this would be fun because this is our first time with more than two people on the show. We want to talk about our all-time starting five and why we picked who we did um i have mine uh i i wanted to do um the way i wanted to do it was i didn't want to have multiple people from the same from the same franchise on my squad Um, all i can say is that I can pick five players from the Lakers franchise all time, and there will be and, any, <laughs> any, any, I mean, any other, any other five. Anyone. I mean, here's here, here's the thing: you could have you could have three Lakers players on your all time starting five, and no one would think you were crazy because they've had that many that many great players the, in different and positions. Honestly, the best franchise in, in, in history. Okay, see now that's now you're trying you're trying to start up an argument. Now you're pushing it. Now you're pushing it, guy. That's an argument for next week. Okay, Okay, don't don't get it started right now. (laughs) But let me go ahead and start with you, Rick. Your all-time starting five going from point guard to center. Okay, I will travel all the way down there to L.A. Grab Magic Johnson (laughs) at point, and my shooting guard, of course, the best shooting guard of all time, Michael Jordan. At small forward, give me the best. Player in the history of the game, LeBron James. What? Oh, he called him the goat. He called him the goat. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Come see, on. See, I can't argue it because right. that, you know. Here, I'll let you All finish. Right. I'll let you finish. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Power forward. That's a really tough one. But give me Tim Duncan. And that's then fair. at center, give me. This was a tough one. I had this other guy in mind, but I'm gonna go with Bill Russell. This, this See, that's that Celtic loyalty. Because yeah. I was gonna, Celtic I was loyalty. gonna go with, but we can't have you know the same team, and whatnot. I was right. gonna go with Kareem, but give me Bill Russell because he was just an animal, a right. team guy. Okay, now real quick before I get to you, Felix, I I need to, I w- I would I don't have a problem with you saying that LeBron is the goat, but I don't think that you can judge that yet until his career is over. Right. Like once once the cement is dry <laughs> and his mm-hmm. stats are set in stone, then right. you can say that he's the GOAT. But until then, Michael has played. He has retired twice. Okay, he's retired twice. He's he's paid his dues right now. He is Tragic. the only really the only three people you can make a case for the GOAT. Michael Jordan, Bill Russell, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Those are the only people that I can argue for the GOAT right now until LeBron retires. I can respect that. I can respect that. But, you know, at small forward, it is solid that he's the best small forward of all time. I, I you know as, what? As, I, as, okay. That's not outright. I think you can say um, I think it wins, but I think it's also disrespectful, disrespectful to, you know, like guys like Dr. J. Um, James Worthy. James you think Worthy he's bad? You think you think even, better than LeBron? Larry, you think he's better hey, than LeBron? Larry, I think Larry Bird. I th- I think Larry Bird is a I better think, small forward than LeBron James. I think that's also kind of disrespectful. LeBron James would have eaten Larry Bird and his entire Are you family. Crazy? He would have ate his family. Are you crazy? You, you do <laughs> okay, okay, Rick. Uh, you uh, do. Larry Bird was a skinny, kind of scrawny guy, but he had game. <laughs> Larry, Bur- Larry Bird. Game. If you if you he ask anyone game. from the eighties, not ask even from any, the Celtics, yeah. ask anyone. He was one of the, he was one of the dirtiest players. No, in no, the no. 80s. I respect that. I'm a Celtics fan. I love Larry Bird. But you are a Boston fan. How can you say that? Rick? But LeBron, LeBron. Hold, okay, no, hold that thought. Hold that thought, Rick. Hold on, Rick. Oh my Felix, who is your all-time starting? Oh, all-time. All right. Point. 
you know, I gotta go with go with. You, you say you can't choose it from the same. You can't have. You can have one Laker okay. player. Okay. One Laker player. All right. So for point guard, I'm gonna go with. Um, can I choose like a? Okay, for point guard, can I go with D, D- Wade? Dwayne Wade at Dwayne point Wade guard. For point guard at point. Hold on. Dwayne Wade was a monster. Like in like in 06, 07. Oh my god. Oh my. All right. Can, can based on based on their can, entire career, you're taking Dwayne Wade as the second best point guard of all time. You know, I, can I go with Dwayne Wade though? I, sure. I, I know he played shooting. It's, hey, it's not my list, man. Go ahead. Right, you, you know what? You know what? Actually, at point, um, you know, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Um, at point, I'm gonna go with uh, hmm, you know what? Point, I'm gonna go with Allen Iverson. At point, Allen Iverson. At point. Okay. Shooting guard, you know, I gotta go Kobe. You know. Co- Kobe? G-O-A-T. Co- Kobe over Michael. G O A T. You know, yeah. Kobe yeah. over Michael. Yeah, of course. How? G O A T. Shaq you know? carried him to three oh, finals. Boy, he boy. carried him to three finals. No, he did not. Who was who was passing him the ball? Who was who was finals MVP in all three of those? Of course it was Shaq. Shaquille exactly. O'Neal. But they were oh my oh my who, who were they playing? I know they played um I know they won other years. One I lost respect years. when you said Allen Iverson. Oh, okay, man. Crazy? Hey, no disrespect to AI. He has the crazy? he has the filthiest Detroit, of all time. Detroit Pistons. Oh Isaiah Thomas God. is Alan, better. Alan, Isaiah Alan Thomas Iverson. is better than Allen Iverson. Alan Pistons, the Pistons. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas. Maybe on maybe on defense. Get, uh, uh, oh, maybe have you, on have defense. Have Rick? you seen Jesus. that man? Alan Iverson was mean. Oh look, look goodness. at the team. John Stockton. Dude, Rick, look, look at look at who Iverson had. Look at who Iverson had. Look at who Isaiah Thomas had. Bro, the, oh my God! The man made it to the finals with who? But he lost. Oh. What was the NBA in that with year? The, Nothing. Who did he lose to? Who did he Nothing. lose to? Nothing. Oh. Arguably one of the best teams of all time. Kobe. He he, he lost against Kobe. Oh my God! He made that was the, the only finals. team in the NBA like that By that himself. year. All right. The rest there was Alan, no competition. I, Allen Iverson oh, ruined the Lakers' oh, perfect postseason. In one game, game oh, one of the finals, game he, one he of the finals. Like 56, wasn't it? I think it was fifty. He didn't win a ring. He, he didn't win a ring. Points. He didn't win a ring. Magic Johnson better than Allen Iverson. Oh my oh, Magic God. Johnson had our, I think, the greatest team of all time. Bro, oh my God. Okay, but anyways, Magic Johnson. Oh no, no. no. Okay, Allen, Iverson, Allen Iverson and Kobe. Kobe. I'm going with LeBron at small forward, power forward. Um, you know, I gotta go with uh, power forward. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna go with center first. Center, of course. Oh, I can't. I can't choose Shaq. I'm gonna choose Shaq. Uh, center. I'm gonna go with. Uh, um, you haven't chosen a Laker yet. You can take Shaq if you want. I'm sorry, I've chosen Kobe. Oh, that's right. You took Kobe. Okay. Dang, um, it's hard. See, you throw me off because it should be center. Michael. You're throwing me off. Man. Oh no, power forward. I'm going Carl Carl Malone at power forward. Um, you can't have Carl Malone without John Stockton. Come on, man. Mm, nah. Come on. John Tyler, he's a good player. Good player. All, all-time leader in steals, all-time leader in assists. He's a good pass. He's a good pass. Come on, man. But, you know, I, I got to go. I got to go with Carmelo and Allen Iverson. And then at the center, give me, um, hmm, um, I'm going with, I'm going with Tim Duncan at, at, at the center. I, dude, that is... And it's I got, a, I got, a, I got respect for all those guys, but to say that that is like an all-time starting five lineup—that's you know, a good starting five. It's really good, but I mean, like, even though I, I disagree with Riggs, I, I feel like his is just so much better, man. What? He has what, what Michael. He has Michael oh, Jordan. We got Kobe Bryant. I, oh my God. I understand. Kobe Look, Bryant. no disrespect to Kobe. No disrespect to Kobe. No disrespect. Jordan won three, took two years off, and won three more. Bro, the guy, look who he had. Kobe this. couldn't win for six years without Shaq. Oh, Shaq? Without Shaq. He could not win. Okay. So, first of all... They needed the Lakers to make a trade for another big man in Pau Gasol before he even made it to the to the playoffs. Okay, so who, he, he's supposed to win a ring with freaking... um uh What's, what's that guy's name? Uh, what, Sasha Brown? Vujicic? He's supposed to win a ring what, with, what's with your, Kwame what's Brown? Your... They thought Kwame Brown was supposed to be great. Okay, he's still, so he's supposed to win a ring with Kwame Brown. I, look, Kwame <laughs> Brown is, is one of the biggest what-ifs. Oh, okay, Michael God. Jordan is responsible for, for the deterioration of his career. Let's be honest. He destroyed his psyche and turned him into the <laughs> biggest bust of all time. What? Kwame. What's your Brown. top five, eight? What's your start So you, you're telling me he look, was supposed to win a ring with Kwame Brown? The, Look, Kwame Brown could be it could be a, well, well, a your twelfth man. He, he, you could win someone, a he, he, he needed someone. Look, I'm not I'm not making excuses. What I'm saying is 
is Kobe is great. All I'm saying is one MVP, the man, five MVPs. And the man, he who, who, who was his coach? Like, he went six years. Phil Jackson. Without a good coach. Phil Jackson. But he, he, he left, though. Yeah, Phil Jackson. He, he left. After, even, after, even after Shaq. Even after Shaq, Phil Jackson oh still couldn't God. win. He still couldn't win. Cause who's he supposed to? Who's he supposed to play with? Him? But did did you did you not say earlier in the show that Phil Jackson was one of the greatest coaches of all time? Yeah. If you're one of the greatest coaches of all time, you can do something. Greg Popovich okay, is able to keep the Spurs afloat with a bag of chips and <laughs> a side salad, and he's okay? been he's been able to do it in the okay. past years as well because okay. he's had first, injuries. First of all, I never said. That. I think honestly, Greg Popovich versus Phil Jackson. I think um, because of what Phil Jackson. Cause he what Tony Parker is like eighty years old. 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tim Duncan was like it was seventy, and then they were still able. He he was still look. able to coach up that team. Okay. To beat look. LeBron James. Look 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 look. Dwayne look. Wade. This, this is that this was insane. Like, this is all I'm gonna say. Look, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna let me get through it. Right, let me right. get through it. Okay, I got, got the piece of paper right mm-hmm. here. All right. Point guard, Magic Johnson. Okay. Right, that's that's a good pick. Good pick. I the best Any, pick. No no complaints. Okay. Shooting guard, the GOAT, Michael Jordan. Oh, I thought you were Kobe Bryant. No, Michael Jordan, okay? Six is better than five, oh let's remember. Goodness. Six is better what? than five. Oh Six is better than five, big guy. Rings only. Oh. Five, okay, five MVPs is better than one. Remember that. Well, oh, my God. Okay, I'm okay, gonna, okay. NBA was so weak from 1990 so, to 2000. The 90s was weak. Okay. N- not the, yeah, the 1990s. The 90s was weak. Even, even you know, Jordan and going through Michael the Cavs, Jordan going through the freaking, Knicks. Dennis Rodman and uh, what's the name? Uh, Scottie Pippen to do all his dirty work. All his dirty work. Is that is that is that, all, is that, all, is that all, hey is that why work. Michael Jordan won Defensive Player of the Year in 1988? Mm. Okay. That's not that's 88. Hey, he's still hey, That's hey. 88. He, 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 he grinded he, it out. He grinded he, it out. He, he hadn't even won a ring. That show. He he's been an all-time steals leader for two years before. He's a good defender. You can't say he, that he's he not didn't. a better defender than Kobe. I'm gonna ignore that statement. But he's I not. Need, I need. To, I'm, let me get on to my list. Let me get on. Let me get on with it. Okay. Right, so I have Magic Johnson, <laughs> Michael Jordan, small forward. I have Larry Bird, greatest small instead forward of ever. No. Of I have Larry Bird at small forward. I have LeBron at power forward. Oh, jeez. And then I so have. You tell me LeBron could go up against Tim Duncan and Karl Malone head to head in the paint. He did it he's in the first. Better. Finals. He's better than them. In the in the post. Yes, LeBron. Oh my God. LeBron is he the greatest. Have, don't throw it. Are you Le, crazy? Le, LeBron is the greatest finisher at the rim for his no, height. I, I'm saying ever. against Carmelo, Tim Duncan, one on one in the post. LeBron could go. go LeBron is 6'9", 260 pounds. Especially against Tim Duncan, he would have. He can't. He can't. You know, he's dunked on Tim here, Duncan. Okay, here, here's <laughs> on, look. Here's the here's the reason. Uh, look, listen. Here's the, here's the reason. Right. Here's the reason I have him at power forward is for floor spacing. Okay, all these guys can shoot except for Magic Johnson. All right. For, all right. For floor space. At center. I was going to have Shaq. I can't have Shaq because I got Magic Johnson. So I'm taking the most underrated NBA legend at center, Hakeem Olajuwon. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a good pick. The dream. Hakeem, Hakeem was a good He pick. had the, the greatest footwork, the mm-hmm. greatest pose moves I've ever seen from a big man in and my I life. Think, I think it's also, I think it's unfair to a lot of people when you just bring out like five the greatest players because I, I just think it's, you know, it's a little unfair. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of opinion. It's yeah, a matter of opinion. It's, 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 it's what suits it's what suits you and what you like exactly. to watch, and that's that's why for me as much as I as much as I love Shaq, he was I, I watched him, you know, when I was little when he was on Miami because I didn't get to see him in his Laker days. Mm-hmm. I wasn't watching basketball at the time, but you know when when he played for the Heat and when he went to Phoenix, and I really hate to talk about his Phoenix days because that was <laughs> depressing to watch his exactly. body deteriorate. <laughs> And you know, um, like it's just, it's not, it's I mean, it really time. did, man. His knees just, his back. Sometimes he would just have better luck and like, you know, like freaking Bill Russell, 11 rings. He was, oh my. The, he, he's, he's the greatest champion in the history of sports. He played in he 11 is. rings. The, the yeah. league wasn't as competitive. Just the league there was, was eight teams. If, eight teams. If, if, if like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant played like in the, in the 50s, then uh, or they would have like, what, 15, 20 rings? It's hard to compare generational players. Exactly, yeah, exactly. It's, it's very yeah, difficult to do. Because, like, the technology as well, you know, they're not yeah. going to the same treatment, like, you know. LeBron, you know, he's he's stayed healthy for I don't know how many years. And, like, Michael Jordan, by year, like, 12, you know, he was, like, you know, 
Scrap. Like Will Chamberlain, and all, they were playing right. in, in Converse. But, you know, <laughs> but, but that's because he had missed two years, and then he missed another another two yeah. years, and then he came back. And, like, now LeBron has, like, everything. He has, like, the technology, you know, how to keep his body. The treatment. That, that's treatment. worth a lot. Let me, let, me ask you, let me ask you guys this, and I don't mean to go off topic, but I was, I was thinking about this the past few days, is I was looking at how many points LeBron has scored throughout his career up until this point. He's 32. He'll be 33 next month. Will he pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the most points scored in NBA history? Oh, yes. If he keeps yes. He, does, he is, yes. But the way I've done know, the numbers. He's getting old, and all it takes is that one injury. Right, right. You know? And it, hey, 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 man, knock on wood because yeah, this I, guy. He won't get injured because that man is built. Rick, Rick, come on, man. You can't, <laughs> he's 33. He's, he's be built 30. different. He's Look, playing like, he's but playing listen, listen, listen. If, if he, uh, the, way I've crunched the, the way I've crunched the numbers is if he, if he, if he plays 70-plus games, for the next five years, all he has to do is average twenty-two points a game for five years. Him being thirty, you, know, thir- you five, five, the thirty-eight average and twenty-two. That's what I'm saying, though. I don't expect him to average twenty-two points because right now he's averaging twenty-eight. Oh, so I that's going to bring the average that. down. So if, if over that five-year period, if he could average twenty-two points a game, he will pass Kareem at the age of thirty-eight. Yeah. But, he, you know, he'll be able to do it. What so I'm saying is, it's, it's, it's plausible. He, he was averaging a good. 27, and then it just took away. Right, but Kobe, Kobe had, uh, t- like, 26 injuries in those past three years with the Lakers. Yeah. You know, and, and that the, was, he was a three. broken shell of a man. It was really <laughs> sad to and, see. Oh, my. He was playing with so He was playing with scrubs to his whole three, he, the last, yeah, his he last really, three years. He see, held the, it. the problem was the Lakers wanted to rebuild, but they still had Kobe. And you're not going to you're not gonna trade him after being there for 17 years with the same franchise. That was just tragic. And... It, 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 just, just him, him rupturing his Achilles. There's a lot of players that don't even come back after and what, that. He, he was, he was just, he was dogging that game. I, I don't know how many points he had, but he was just dogging. And then, I just, I just I, couldn't I, believe I don't, it. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how he tore it. Honestly, he just took one step. I mean, could you, could you imagine playing with that pain? Yeah, his body said for the rest no. of the game. That, that's just that's that's he's that's crazy a, to me. He's a soldier. But like the difference between like LeBron and Kobe, LeBron's never had a major injury in his career. No, I think the worst thing LeBron's ever had is a sprained ankle or yeah, back yeah. spasms. And like, like the thing is, because he does take he does take really good care of his body. You know, he invests you know, a lot in himself. You know, you know, you can't play against Father Time though. You know, it just he, takes Father that, Time is undefeated. <laughs> that that one wrong move, one wrong step. I mean, but, I mean we we saw him in a game earlier this year where. He got his ankle got stepped on and it went at like a ninety degree angle, <laughs> and he, he 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 walked it off. I mean, there's he's you know, truly you can't gifted. Tell me he's truly that gifted. LeBron isn't LeBron the, the, the NBA bro. Superman. Yeah, I is. mean, he's it's crazy the 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 things that he's able to put his body through. He doesn't ever get. I don't know. He he's never like had a major injury. No, he's he's a master like, manipulator of his own self. Like, what, it's insane. Or, what Kevin O'Four, right? Two thousand four was his rookie year. Yeah. Thirteen years, it's nothing, insane. Nothing. nothing. This, yeah, this is his fifteenth season. He's he's working on his fifteenth season right now. He's still putting up these numbers. Let me ask: you, Could LeBron win MVP this year? If if he if he finishes with a top two seed in the Eastern Conference, is he MVP? He, if, if he wins fifty eight plus games, is he MVP? He could, but he won't. Putting up twenty eight and a half, eight and a half, and nine, is he MVP? I think- if you, have, if you have anyone else's honestly, name attached to those numbers that's not LeBron James, that's think, an MVP. Yeah, that is. I think James Harden is going to get one for this year. This year, If yeah. the Rockets finish with the number one seed in the Western Conference, yeah. I think James Harden deserves an MVP. Number one seed, that's kind it's of, locked, sealed, and delivered. They, they have a two-game lead over the Warriors right now. If they can keep that seed, even if they tie oh, yeah, they, they hold the tiebreaker. Yeah, if they keep it, then I think they're going to go to they, they own the they, uh, they own the tiebreaker <clears> right now. But I'm saying if, if the Rockets finish in the West with, with 62 wins, and LeBron gets the number one seed in the East with 62 wins. I think I think you can make an argument that LeBron's MVP, especially playing half the season without your second best player in Isaiah Thomas. Exactly. I mean. Oh yeah, he, like LeBron would be would deserve it, but I don't think he'll get it just because how you know how the NBA is and whatnot. I think the, if the Rockets get the number one seed, James Harden will win the MVP. Do you think the, do you think the NBA is just tired of giving LeBron the MVP? Because yeah. <laughs> it's just voter fatigue. He deserves it these past shoot. Five, no, six no, years. Stop. Should they just get him like a little? Uh, should, yes. Should they yes. Curry, Look, Steph Curry. No. no. Here's, here's, the, here's the thing. Here's those the thing. Couple years, Steph Curry. He did, he did, he here's the thing. I, I no. agree. The year Steph Curry hit over 400 three pointers. Exactly. Four hundred. Listen, that's crazy? that's incredible. He deserved MVP. But the year after that, I don't think he deserved that MVP. Uh, he didn't. Well, he shattered. James the Harden. Record. James Harden deserved that MVP. But, uh, what were they? Um, seventy nine and what? They were, the they were 73 and 9. 73 and 9. But that was the year that he was shooting ridiculous. I'm talking about the year after that. or the, I'm sorry, the year before that. 
I don't think he deserved MVP. Oh, yeah, because the next year, he played even better than that. And James Harden played better than Steph Curry did that year to me. I think James Harden got cheated out. He's been cheated out of three MVPs already. I, I agree. He's I, been second place in, in uh, just MVP like, voting. You know how many MVPs Kobe got cheated out on? Well, Steve Nash took two of them. The, the guy he did get cheated out of those two. And that's, that's no knock to Steve he Nash. Aver- Steve Nash is a great player. What one of the best of all time. Season. 35 and you don't win MVP. That's crazy. Who, who what did the Lakers do that season? That Steve Nash. Oh, he did win it that year. He averaged 35. Didn't the other year Steve Nash won MVP? Didn't Shaq average like 30 and 15 or something yeah, like I, that? I, I and he, he didn't get MVP for that season either. Yeah, that, They just wanted Steve to win. The MVP but, but, the, but the Suns did get the number one seed, and that shows you what goes into it. Like, your team's success plays into the MVP, which that's not what the award is about whatsoever. Uh-huh. And then they would put it, you know, they would put it as a team award, as an individual award. It doesn't make any sense. It's crazy to be honest, but no, LeBron would deserve for these past at least two seasons, at least. To me, I always think, I think for the past seven years, LeBron should have been MVP. Other than, yeah. other than that one season that Steph Curry Honestly, yeah. went off, because like, he doesn't like go all out during the regular but, season either. But, what was it, the three-point record before uh, Steph Curry? Broke? I think it was like two hundred and nine was the record, and he broke he, about like one hundred and ten. He, he shattered it by one hundred. He, he hit four hundred two, and I think the record was like two ninety something. Four hundred. But did you hear me like? LeBron in the regular season doesn't even go all out because he doesn't need to. Imagine if he actually did. Oh, he doesn't need to because he does that in the playoffs. Exactly. We, we saw what he did to the Pacers last year. We saw what he did to the Raptors last year, okay? He destroyed them. Those eight games, but, those but eight look, games look, 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 are the best eight games I've ever we, seen. If you play on the West, it'll be a different, entirely different story. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying, but you don't think that LeBron would still be guaranteed a top three seed in the Western Conference? I don't think that he'll, if if he, I, he he definitely would not be making it to the finals every year like he he does on the East. So so you don't think that if if you replace Carmelo Anthony with LeBron James on the Thunder that they're not a top three seed in the West? Oh, if, if LeBron were the Thunder, what? If you, if, if LeBron the, no, the that's Thunder, what I'm saying. The, listen, you know what, you know the Thunder are nine and eleven right now oh. with Carmelo Anthony, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook. If you remove Carmelo and insert LeBron, tell I mean, me tell me they don't win. The, tell me they don't win it. No, they win it all easy, no yeah. doubt. LeBron, honestly, he just he knows how to work people around like himself. So, I is it, it, that's like one of the reasons why he's he's like he he makes his like teammates so much better. Like, you know, he has um like he just knows like how to put the pe- put the pieces together in order to form it. Like, and <laughs> those are like qualities you would see like in a in a, in a like a head coach. You would expect to see like in a head coach. That's he can be a he's, player he's head a coach. Player coach. That's what yeah, he is. Exactly. Like he knows how to. Like when people say that Tyron Lue is the assistant coach of the Cavs, they're not exactly. kidding. LeBron is the coach. <laughs> he just he just he knows how to make everything work um, around him, and just like he knows how to make the team better. And I, I'm just I'm just excited to watch the rest of the season. Man. Oh this, my goodness, it's gonna like, be fun. I feel like this was a good conversation, gentlemen. Just wait till playoffs. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. Playoff time. Hey, we're already one fourth of the way through the season, man. We've only got 62 games left, oh, roughly. That's crazy. Once and Thomas comes good. back, it's gonna be fun. Huh? Once, once Isaiah Thomas. Once Isaiah Thomas comes back, it's gonna shake up the East. I'm I'm waiting for him to come back. I'm really excited for his return. Yeah, I, I want to see how yeah. he's gonna do. Yeah, him and LeBron should be fun to watch. But that's gonna do it for us today. We really hope you enjoy. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. We probably talked for a little bit longer than we probably should have. But uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed. And uh, again, I'm Gavin Campbell. I'm Ricardo Vargas. Thanks for everything. And I'm Felix Barna. Uh Thank you guys and have a nice day. Yep. You. Uh, we'll see you next weekend. Thank you.